It's right on the bank of the Nile. Live crocodile. What does he eat? My feet. Hmm? That was worn by a Nazi. Wow, the Nile looks so clean here. It's too hot for this. And inside. Hey guys. <laughs> Hello guys, it's Doug. I am here in Aswan in southern Egypt, or as locals call it, Upper Egypt. Got in here last night, checked into my guest house, and now I am out exploring, and I'm gonna take you guys with me to see what Aswan is all about. So, so far I'm absolutely loving the vibe here. I'm walking right now along the Nile. It's absolutely beautiful. Feels much more relaxed than Luxor. At least in, since I've been here, there's a lot less hassle. The carriage guys aren't so aggressive as they were in Luxor, which is very nice. The Nile is very clean here because it's closer to the origin of it. And I'm actually staying on that island across the river there. So I am about to hop on a ferry, head back over there and meet up with the man that runs the guest house that I'm staying at. And we're gonna walk around the Nubian village there on the island and show it to you guys. This ferry is like a public ferry. You can pay five pounds to go on it and it's like 30 cents US. Just goes back and forth whenever there's people. Got my mango smoothie for a little over a dollar. Much better price than Jamba Juice in New York where it would be like eight dollars. <laughs> Shukra. All right, we made it. Ferry is super quick, takes like Less than two minutes, probably, to get across. This island is super local. It's just like skinny little alleyways and stuff, and you gotta weave your way through. Hello! Salamu alaikum. Alaikum is salam wa rahmatullah. Huh? Money won't live. Oh, no money? Why? Oh, money, money. That's my money. <laughs> Fine, take it. Allah, salamu alaikum. No, share with them. No, 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 no. Aywa. Share with them. Yeah, you can, you can. Hello. Share. Ah, la. Because. You guys are uh, tough bargainers. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so you can see what I mean here. Just weaving through these alleys. It is super local. And my guest house is on the other side of the island, so we gotta cross. I hope I'm going the right way. It's not such a big island, so it's kind of hard to get lost, but yeah, look at these narrow little alleys. Okay, dead end. I love all the old buildings, the doors. Uh, I think it's this way. Let's see, they're growing some corn here. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hello. All right, I found my way back. This is my guest house behind me. It's right on the bank of the Nile. Check it out. My window actually faces the river, so it's so cool. You wake up, you look out the window, and you're staring at the Nile. So this guest house is called Beit Zaina. It's a basic accommodation, but I really like it, and the guy that runs it is super nice. They include breakfast in the morning. It was delicious. And it isn't like Cairo here. The water's actually clean. Let's see, my first time touching the Nile. Crazy. Nice and cool. Refreshing. Hi, guys. Hello. All right, guys, so this is Jasser. He's from Beit Zena guest house, and he's gonna show us around this Elephantine Island, yeah? Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you so no, much. You're welcome. It was uh -huh. called the Kush Kingdom. Oh, the so Kingdom we, of Kush. Yeah, Kingdom of Kush. Well, nice. Neighbors always fight, south of Pharaohs. And the neighbors are always fighting. We always have 
fights between Pharaoh and the Nubians. Until came one wise king from Pharaoh called Second Ramses. Ramses II. Oh, the big one, the famous guy. Yeah, he wants to finish this troubles between Nubians and the Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He knows that marriage will solve this. So he decided to marry the Nubian queen. Ah. It was queen of Ertari. After that, peace comes between Nubians and the uh, Egyptians. And since this time, Nubians live between Egypt and Sudan, here and there. And we still have our own language. We speak, uh, this is our mother language, Nubian language. And you guys speak like a mix of Arabic and Nubian? Or yes. when you're speaking to a Nubian, do you speak only Nubian? Only Nubian. Ah, okay. But Nubian changed a bit, so we have a little Arabic word in Nubian language sure. now. Yeah, it's, it's like a blend. Yes. So Jasir was just telling me this island is called Elephantine Island because way back in the day, during the Pharaoh times, they were importing a ton of ivory, like elephant tusk ivory here, and sending it to the Pharaohs in the north of Egypt. But no more now. No more. <laughs> no more ivory. So guys, another interesting thing about the Nubian language. Back in 1973, when Egypt had a war with Israel, the Egyptian military used the Nubian language to communicate because the Israelis, they don't know Nubian, so they use Nubian as kind of a code language to keep secrets uh, during the war and communicate securely. It's kind of similar to what the US did actually during World War II with the Navajo Native American language. So this is really old. Yeah, really, yeah. From thousands of years? Yeah, thousands of years. Egyptian government uh, tried to take it before, but people here refused. Is it buried under there? Is there more? Yeah. Meters. Under the ground? Yeah, yeah, meters. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Look at this thousand-year-old carving of uh, a man. Is this Nubian or pharaoh? Pharaoh. Pharaonic. So this is an Egyptian, ancient Egyptian carving or ruin goes down into this into the sand here and it's literally just right in the middle of the street in this village so over there's the old cataract hotel it was built in 1885 basically it's one of the oldest and nicest hotels around and then you got a great view of the Nile here so beautiful there's some Russian tourists hello goats they're enjoying some trash I don't think they like people so much well, got a real crocodile here. Wow. And Jasser was saying all the Nubian houses, they love to use a lot of color. It's really nice. This is Mr. Hamada. And uh, look what he's got in this, in this innocent looking bucket here. <laughs> Live crocodile. How old is he? One year and a half. Wow. What does he eat? White fingers. Hmm? White finger. White finger? <laughs> What will you do with him? You're gonna keep him? You throw him in Lake Nasser. Does he have a name? Elephantina. Elephantina. <laughs> nice. There he goes. That's so cool. Shukran. Yeah, the call to prayer is happening. You can hear it from across the river. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> that kind of scared me. This guy's got some teeth. I'm from New York. New York, not Ohio. No, not Ohio. <laughs> kind of close by though. Made in USA, look at that. Oh, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. My friend Grant is from Cleveland. Yeah. I went there one time. 1917. 1917, wow. It's my old collection. Wow, old cameras, yeah? Old French camera. Wow. England. Amazing. This is a German gas World mask. War II Nazi gas mask. I mean. I mean? What's... Near Alexandria. Oh, from yeah. fighting there? Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. That was worn by a Nazi. That's crazy. So this is an elephant ear shield and a sword. You look pretty scary right now. <laughs> this man has the most amazing collection. I love these felucas. So this is more of the traditional feluca, whereas the felucas that you see in Cairo are basically like long uh, motorboats. But these are felucca, traditional sailboats with the slanted mast. So cool looking. So you guys can see a uh, Rasta flag behind me. A lot of Nubians really like Bob Marley. He uh, is everywhere around here. Kind of like in, in Luxor too. Bob Marley everywhere. 
<laughs> they took it from you? He sings against racism. Yeah, he sings against in racism. The time, right. yeah, Nubians was feeling a lot of racism when we lost our home. It's very difficult to lose your home. Yeah, of course. You can't lose anything, but home is not easy. Yeah. So he was singing deep, we feel his song is All right, guys, so that was really wonderful, hanging out with Jasser and his wife, who cooked us a delicious meal. So if you guys are watching this, thank you so, so much. That was so nice. So generous, and I really, really, really appreciate the hospitality. Now I'm back on the mainland side of Aswan, going for a little walk, gonna grab maybe another bite to eat, and get ready for tomorrow, because tomorrow I'm gonna take a felucca tour uh, around this area of Aswan, but until then, I will see you tomorrow morning. Alrighty, good morning guys. It is the next day here in Aswan. I spent the morning getting a COVID test, PCR test, uh, for my journey onward to Sudan that I'm doing in two days. I'm so excited. Now, I'm on a boat. We're gonna do some sightseeing around Aswan. This is Adel. <laughs> so and uh, he asked me where I'm from and I said, I'm American. And he turned around and unfurled this flag. <laughs> We're going to Botanical Gardens, Nubian Village, and yeah, it's gonna be a great day. Yalla. Wow, the Nile looks so clean here. Also, it's so hot right now. It's like 98 degrees, so that's like 37 degrees Celsius. It is so hot, and I'm gonna get another sunburn. So behind me, guys, we're approaching the Nubala tombs. Take a look. Carved right into the side of the mountain and on the bank of the Nile. Okay, so I come meet you here? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, look at the little lizard. Whew. The second you step off the moving boat on the Nile and the air is still, it is so hot. Wow. And by the way, this is March, late March. So it's not even the hottest, not even close to the hottest that it's gonna get here during the summer. But for me, it's very hot. <laughs> so there are guys at the base of this mountain or hill here selling camel rides. You can see behind me. My boat driver, Adel, told me just don't do that, which he didn't even need to tell me because after my first camel experience and the resulting uh, 48 hours to 72 hours of pain, uh, I'm not going on another camel. So these tombs are pharaonic, they're not Nubian. They're back from when the pharaohs were ruling all of this land. Oh my gosh, so cool. And it looks like the Christians were here at some point. You got Jesus up there. I can't believe this is just open. They come up here. can still see some of the uh, real ancient Egyptian carvings on this on the uh, pillars here. Got some fish. Wow. Reminds me of Luxor. Not as good condition, but similar. By the way, it's so much cooler when you come into the stones and you're covered. I think I might stay here. In there there's carvings like graffiti which kind of is bad but at the same time it's kind of cool because some of them are super old like I saw one from 1885 and 1900 so there's my boat with the American flag by the way that's Elephantine Island it starts there got the big hotel on the end and that's where I'm staying somewhere down further into the tomb. Wow, it's echoey. Check out the original color, so vibrant. Wow, and look at that back wall, wow. Shokran, huh? Ticket. Okay, Shokra. So this is where the mummies were. Now it's, I don't know if you can see, it's dark, but now there's bars. 
but you can see where they used to be. All right, I'm on my way up to the top of this hill or mountain. I had no idea I would be doing this much hiking when, before I came to Egypt. They don't tell you about this. <laughs> Too hot for this. Okay. Wow. <laughs> this view is insane. This has got to be the best view of Aswan. I wish I had one of those sandboards right now. I could just head straight down there and skip the camel guys. <laughs> I think I'm literally gonna cause an avalanche walking down this mountain. I'm like up to my ankles in sand. It's like my least favorite thing ever, getting sand in your sneakers. Uh, <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> but I had to go this way to avoid my uh, camel guy stalker. Back to the boat, okay. All right guys, I made it to the next stop. I'm in the botanical gardens of Aswan. It's so strange coming here from being on that desert mountaintop before because it looks like I'm in the middle of a jungle now. So beautiful. And some nice shade too. This way. Salamu alaikum. Yeah? <laughs> Are they just going to sell me something? Yeah, look in here. Okay. This way is very, very good. So another thing I've noticed uh, here in Aswan is the Nubian people, they love Bob Marley, and they're also very fond of his favorite plant, <laughs> which you'll catch whiffs of frequently as you walk around uh, here in Aswan. There's my guest house. So apparently the area behind me is a popular beach where people Locals and tourists come to swim and play soccer or football. So you can swim here in Aswan in the Nile because there's no crocodiles and the water is super clean. But on the other side of the high dam, on the Lake Nasser side, there are crocodiles, so no swimming there. All right guys, so we're arriving at the Nubian village. To be honest, I'm not sure if this is just like a place set up for tourists. I mean, people definitely live here, but I don't know if it's kind of kitschy or not. But we're gonna take a look. I feel like I've already gotten an authentic Nubian village experience living on Elephantine Island. But yeah, let's go check it out. Gotta see some crocodiles. Okay, so the place I'm in now is definitely for tourists. But anyway, there are crocodiles here. It's still cool to see. Right inside this building where I am now, there is a pit in the middle. And inside, two Nile crocodiles. Hi guys. You gonna move? And they are secured in here by a couple, I think, bed frames with rocks on top. Guys, it's now well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit here. So I'm chilling out here with the crocodiles for a little while, having some uh, hibiscus tea chilled. God, I'm so red. Oof. So guys, this place is definitely for tourists. It's not my favorite place I've ever been in Egypt, just because it's, I don't know, a lot of hassle and it's clearly just, you know, made for tourists. But uh, it's still a cool place to check out. I think if you're coming to Aswan, it's better to check out Elephantine Island if you want to see a really authentic Nubian village life, because that's the real deal. But still cool to come here and see the crocodiles. And of course, the boat on the Nile is uh, always a pleasure. Show here. <laughs> 
Oh, good morning, guys. I uh, have been at the Sudanese embassy all day working on getting the visa because the way I tried to do it before kind of fell through. Won't go into the details, but the best way to do it is to go to the consulate in Aswan or the embassy in Cairo and just pay the fee. Do it very straightforward like that. So yeah, I've been here for like three or four hours. I finally asked if I could leave for like 30 minutes to just go buy some water and stuff, but now I'm headed back. It is so insanely hot here right now. The only way I can describe it is like, feels like when you get into a car in the middle of the summer and the AC has been off, the car's been sitting there and it just feels like an oven. Like that just intense, dry, heavy heat. Oof, I'm not built for this. Well guys, after five hours at the Sudanese consulate here in Aswan, I am very happy to report that I got it. So here it is. Got the Sudanese um, visa in my passport. So I'm gonna be going there very soon. Super excited. But anyway, until then, back to Aswan. Good morning guys. It is four o'clock in the morning right now and I am awake to drive three hours to somewhere very special. Here we go. So it's like three and a half hours later and I have made it to today's main destination, which is Abu Simbel. So this is a really, really cool place. We're actually really close to the Sudanese border. I'll put a map right here to show you. And the main draw of Abu Simbel is the temples that are here. They're absolutely incredible and I'm walking towards them now. I'm really excited to see them. And Abu Simbel is also located right on the shores of Lake Nasser, which is an enormous man-made reservoir here. Fun fact, it's actually called Lake Nubia in the Sudanese side because Lake Nasser goes into Sudan and Egypt. So Lake Nasser was created when they constructed the Aswan High Dam in the 60s and it was built to give Egypt basically better control of the Nile, control flooding, and control the flow of it. It's an absolutely enormous body of water. It's one of the largest man-made lakes or reservoirs in the world. So guys, the temple behind me is of Ramses II, which is, he's the most famous pharaoh. If you watched my uh, Luxor vlogs, you remember we stopped in front of his tomb in the Valley of the Kings, even though we couldn't enter it because my tour guide said, It's very important to stop in front of this great king too, wow. the king Ramesses the second, the most famous pharaoh ever. Now this is another temple that he built during his reign. Apparently it took between 20 and 30 years to finish building, but this is actually not the original location of this temple. The original location of the temple is somewhere in there. So when they created the Aswan High Dam and thus creating Lake Nasser here, they actually had to relocate this entire temple behind me, if you can believe it. If you look closely, this entire hill is, is man-made, so it's all made of blocks, you can see. And uh, they took the entire temple apart, including the four uh, statues of Ramses II, well, maybe three and a half, and moved them here to this new location. This happened in the mid-60s, so it's pretty incredible they were able to do that. This place is huge. It's hard to describe the size of these statues behind me, guys. There's some people walking out now, so you can see for reference. They are absolutely enormous. I mean, to give you an example, this woman here, this statue that's less than the size of his calf is at least twice my height incredible. There is one annoying thing about these temples that I've noticed across basically all of them in Egypt. When you go inside, if you try to take out a camera, they're like, where's your photo, where's your camera ticket? And you're like, what? Like, I don't even know about this. And they're like, you can use your phone to take pictures, but no cameras. It's like, what's the difference? So they were saying the same thing in here. Like, no, you can't use the camera, only your phone. It's like, okay, but not the end of the world. 
There's a smaller temple here as well. <laughs> there's only like 10 people here. And there's like 200 people over there or something. It's interesting, this is the only place in the two months or so that I've spent in Egypt in total that I've seen a ton of tourists. I mean, this place is packed with tourists, but I haven't seen that in any other site uh, across all of Egypt the entire time I've been here. So this is clearly an important one. And by the way, it was definitely worth it, getting up at 4 a.m. and coming here, you're driving three hours. This place is absolutely spectacular. And it's really amazing to see Lake Nasser as well. Okay, say hello guys, you're on YouTube. Yeah. You have to say something. <laughs> you have to say a message. Yeah, okay. Welcome to Abu Ah, shukran, Habibi. And you? Welcome to Alaska. Funny guy. Yeah. Alrighty, hello guys. It is Friday morning here in Aswan and I am at the bus station ready to head to Sudan. So this is going to be the end of my Aswan video and also a second after I finish this clip I'm going to start my next video which is the journey overland from Egypt to Sudan. So definitely look out for that one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I want to give a huge thank you to my friend Jasser, you're the best. Thank you so much for your hospitality and all of your help. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing and also check me out on Instagram. You can stay in touch with me there and stay up to date on my travels. So thank you guys again for watching. Really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.